here we are. We want to welcome you at a Michael Levine base in the center of Jerusalem, correct? Correct. What's your name? I'm Max. Max, wow. And what do you do here, Max? Uh, I'm in Meluim. I was in Meluim. Now I'm back to being a citizen. Unbelievable. Wow. We're, we're so honored. And we have Mrs. Vanya Rosenbaum, right. who's a co-director of this amazing base, yes. who will show us and, and tell us a little bit about this. And you know, she's a mother to all the soldiers, too. Like, every soldier that comes in knows Vani personally. It's amazing. So, right. So, so we're, we're going to start off over here. I just want to show you. This is Michael Levine. He was a lone soldier from Pennsylvania who um, just wanted to join the army here in Israel. Um, but it was very difficult for him when he got here. He didn't know the language. He had nowhere to sleep. He had nowhere to live. And um, he said, when I get out of the army, I want to start an organization that will help lone soldiers. But unfortunately, uh, Michael fought in the Second Lebanon War, and uh, he was actually in the States when his unit went into Lebanon, and he said to his parents, I need to go back, and uh, he came back to Israel, and within 24 hours of him coming back to Israel, he got into Lebanon and he was killed. So he never got to see the dream come alive, but his family uh, and friends knew what Michael wanted. And so um, a few organizations were opened up in his name, and we have the honor of four years ago opening up the Michael Levine base, and we expanded on Michael's vision with not just helping lone soldiers, but helping lone Benot Sherut. Um, over 400 Benot Sherut come every year from all over the world, and uh, do their service here in Israel and uh, make Aliyah. And uh, then we have over 7,000 lone soldiers. Half of them are Israeli and the other half um, come from all over the world, including Russia uh, and uh, the Ukraine and all over America and uh, South America. And they come here also not knowing the language, not knowing where to sleep or they need help. So here at the base, um, if you see behind me, this is where we are now open because of the war seven days a week. We have all different kinds of programs and events here. Last night we had an event on money management for all the kids who make Aliyah that they could understand how to take care of their money, bank accounts, uh, things like that. Um, we have Friday night meals, we have Shabbat lunch, we have Friday morning breakfast, we um, also have uh, advisors and um, other uh, staff members that anyone could come into to if they have any questions about their service or before they enlist or even when they get out what they should do. We are, we're here to help them with everything. Um, over here, I just want to show you, this is um, our wall of fallen lone soldiers um, starting all the way back from uh, 1982 uh, to unfortunately August um, August 31st 2023 and Maxim was actually a Russian lone soldier so we try and honor all of the lone soldiers here um, some of them LEK for instance was a lone soldier from South Africa he was on. A, he was already out of the army. He was on his way to work. He worked in the old city, and uh, he was actually shot on his way to work, and he was killed. And unfortunately, for us, it was really close at home because Ellie's brother Kasriel was working for us when he was killed, and that was like really close to home. Here we have Ilan Ganellis, who is also a lone soldier. He was on a way to uh, a wedding, and he was um, caught in a drive-by shooting, and he was he was killed. So we honor Ilan as well for his service as an Israeli uh, lone soldier. Um, so again, this is just our main room that we're always changing over. We even have the board here from last night how to budget, how to become rich. That's the, I should have been at that class. Um, and you move the couches. Um, so let me take you a little bit more. 
Since the war began, we have helped thousands of soldiers, not just lone soldiers. We have been getting huge amounts of deliveries of, um, first of all, from all over the world. Thank you. There are ladies, literally, who are knitting hats. They have come from Australia, New Zealand. Bogota, Colombia, all over America, and we are getting these out to the soldiers, not just lone soldiers. We have all different kinds of supplies that soldiers come in, or we get phone calls from units or bases that they're low on certain things and will fill the orders. We have drivers who volunteer their time and will take it to the base and give it to the soldiers. Some more stuff over here, this is where we keep the food to give out, but what's really nice about the base is that we also offer washing machines and dryers because a lot of apartments in Yerushalayim don't have washing machines and dryers and anybody could come in, a lone soldier, Benot Sherut, and they can do their laundry for free, we don't charge, and then if they need, they can also come in here, it even gets more, they can come into our supply closet and they can take any kind of um, toiletries that they need for free, And um, but this is all because of private donations that we get. We don't get anything from the Israeli government, we don't get anything from any other uh, FIDF or any other large organization, but kids come in here and they can get whatever they need, uh, thermals, even sissies, um, again, all the toiletries, socks, and then they're also, they come in here, they can come to our cereal bar, they could make themselves a coffee, a tea, take a bowl of cereal while doing laundry, while sitting with an advisor, and it's like kind of like Walmart, one-stop shopping. We have different psychologists come in and we give uh, therapy for free, uh, anybody in need. Uh, we're going to have a lot of kids dealing with post-trauma soon. Uh, we see it already, that they're coming in a little bit uh, different than they were before October 7th. We also have a couple who offers um, free chiropractor service. They come in and they help put the soldiers back into place and then unfortunately they go back out. And we also have a tape library that you can just take a book, whatever you want to read. Uh, you don't have to bring it back, just pass it on to somebody else and you know, just stay safe. Um, and then we come back to Oh no, I thought I was going to die. Yes. And I thought Rufus would be the same. We just moved to a bigger place, but unfortunately, we need a bigger place. So the dream is to actually find a building and uh, have a really nice big room for the meals. Uh, room for counseling. Um, we also have art therapy here every other Monday night. Um, this is a good way for anyone to express what they want through art. Every Tuesday night we have Torah Cafe, which is part of Hebrew University's Akina program. Uh, kids come here and they learn. Uh, very well received program. Um, we give out for the Chagim. We give out Love um, and Rogan. We give out menorahs and candles for Purim. We give out Mishloch Manot, and we have Megillah reading here. Um, we also have a Suda for Pesach. We give out beautiful Pesach packages, and last year was our first year we even had a Pesach Seder. So we are full service for every need that a lone soldier or Bachir would have, and. Um, we would love to find and welcome Russian lone soldiers that are here. And uh, we're here for everybody, and I think it's a good place for them to come and meet other lone soldiers and, and know that there's a whole community here waiting to meet and, you know, share their experiences with them. So, thank you for visiting the base. How many soldiers altogether are served by your year, month, 
So in the numbers of the. So since we opened, we when? so we opened uh, February 2020, actually two weeks before COVID. That was that was very funny. Uh, it really was a test for us, and, but uh, we we did amazingly well. I I think to date um, we've ha we've serviced about 3,000 lone soldiers in Lebanon who have come through our doors for uh, for anything from uh, a Friday night meal to sitting with an advisor. And since the war began? Thousands. Because also our um, our um, position in the war changed. We were allowed, we were given permission not to just help lone soldiers, but to all soldiers, and not just soldiers, we're also allowed to help displaced families. And um, we've been helping thou thousands of soldiers. Thousands. What, what is your experience with the Russian speaking lone soldiers? So we've, we've had several come in. They're, they're lovely, you know. They're also one to find family and a community. And, um, you know, we, we would love to help do that. You know, we would love to, if we find the need, we would even create the flyers in Russian and get it out to the Russian community for them to see it. But, you know, everyone is welcome here, and uh, everyone is, no matter who you are, whatever religious level you are, everyone is welcome here, and uh, just to, to feel comfortable and know that there's a place in Yerushalayim looking out for you that could help you with any questions, and that can give you the things that you need to make sure that you have a safe and healthy service.